You know, when I was a kid, I loved fishing, but I wasn't very good at it. I, I used the same bait no matter where I was, freshwater, saltwater, spring water, it was the same bait. So I've caught three fish my whole life, but I loved it. There's a show that I love, it's called Wicked Tuna, where they catch these huge tunas. In fact, one of the guys that's on that show came to our church for a season and I was able to baptize Paul from Wicked Tuna, which is pretty cool. But every good fisherman, they know what bait to use in order to catch the kind of fish that they wanna catch. They know exactly. The fresh water is completely different than the salt water, the shrimp, the, whatever it is. Obviously, I don't know a lot about bait because I use the same bait. But do you know there's an enemy that hates you and he knows exactly what bait to use to get inside of your heart, get inside of your mind. Mitchell, will you take a hold of that? All right, so I don't wanna put anybody's eye out today. All right, thank you. Just hold on tight to that. So what, what does the enemy use? The bait of Satan is offense. I want you to know that. If, if the enemy can get you offended, then what will happen, it will turn to anger, eventually turn to unforgiveness, and eventually turn to bitterness. And a bitter, hard heart is exactly where the enemy wants you to be. Because if you're bitter and your heart is hard, then how can God use you to be effectively ministering to other people. So what does the enemy do? He uses such silly things. You know, maybe somebody said something to you or in elementary school, just trying to get you, let that be a memory. Is that, nope, that didn't get you, okay. So maybe it was a relative that was hateful to you when you were growing up. No, I was able to get through that. Maybe it was a spouse that said things to you that were so hurtful, it's, oh, 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 this, I'm getting a good nibble here. I feel it, I feel it, it feels good. Maybe it was somebody that you lost that was close to you and it's caused you to harden your heart and hold unforgiveness towards God. You see, mm, whatever it is, once he, ha you're holding on tight there, Mitchell, thank you. I mean, <laughs> see, if the enemy has us caught, you can let go now. In our heart, he uses the bait of Satan, which is offense, to rob us, to destroy us. Uh-oh. I'm good. And it starts with sometimes the smallest of offenses. But when we open our heart to that offense, and we allow anger to get inside of our heart, and we allow unforgiveness to birth something absolutely horrible, and then we have a bitter heart, then anything that God's trying to get to us, it's bouncing off of a bitter heart. I believe that today is gonna to be a day of breakthrough for many people in this room. I believe that what the enemy is trying to destroy you with, maybe it's from your childhood, maybe it's from your marriage, maybe it's from an ex-marriage, maybe from your children, maybe from your parents, but there's so many people that are carrying the hurt, the pain, the unforgiveness, and they've allowed themselves to get bitter. And today I believe people are gonna lay down the unforgiveness. It's not gonna be an easy one. I wanna want prepare you for that because sometimes we don't wanna think about it because it hurts. But if we don't think about it and we don't deal with it, if we don't allow God to heal it, then we're gonna walk around in mediocrity for the rest of our life and we're constantly gonna be hindered and triggered by the things that have held us back in the area of unforgiveness. How many are ready for this message today? All right, let's hold up our Bibles. Father, we thank you today for your word, it's alive. I pray, God, that you would strengthen us by your word, but also, Father, let your word be medicine to our soul today. In Jesus' name, amen. I wanna welcome everybody at South Tampa. South Tampa, we love you. We're so happy with what God's doing there. All those that are watching online, 
People from all over the world are watching right now online, and we want to welcome each and every one of you. So this is week two of a series that's called Not Trending. In this series, what we're doing is we're looking at the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of the world, and the kingdom of God is completely upside down compared to the kingdom of this world. It's not easy, it's not trending, it's not popular, but it's in the upside down kingdom of God that we see breakthrough in every area of our life. In this world, you know what's trending? Bitterness, resentment, vengeance, anger, all those things are trending. If someone makes you mad in this world, we're gonna hold it against them. We're gonna make them pay for what they did for, to us. We're gonna get even for what happened because that's the way the world works. I'm gonna get mine. That's the opposite of the kingdom of God. In the world, when we're wronged or taken advantage of, we refuse to let it go. It's always right there, ready to come out. That's the world's way. I can remember when I first got into ministry back in 1995, full time here at the church. I was so excited, I was so naive. I was just came in with like, man, I can't wait, I can't believe I'm gonna be able to do all these things and this is gonna be my job and my career. But little did I know that in ministry, there can be a lot of pain and there can be a lot of disappointment and there can be a lot of hurt. And the thing that I wasn't expecting when I first came into ministry is that it would be people that I'm working alongside of that would hurt me. I couldn't believe it. And so I find out about a year into me starting working here full time, I'm the children's pastor, and I'm finding out that there's other pastors that are, that are talking bad about me. Can you believe that? And you know what, I was dealing with that, but then I found out they were talking about my wife. Whoa. And I want you to know this, that was a wound inside of my heart that I carried for several years. Every day I woke up during that period of time, all I could think about was the things that people were saying about me, the things that people were wronging me with, the false accusations that were being made against me and my wife, and I was offended, and I can't get those years back. We're gonna come back to that story at the end. But today's message is not the easiest message. It's gonna be challenging. There's, there's times you're gonna look inside of your heart and you're gonna see it. And so often we hold on to those areas of our heart. We don't wanna let them go, but it's only when you let that go and you give it to God that you will be set free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed, amen? So I wanna to read to you a passage from Luke. And wherever you are, I just want you to focus clearly as Jesus is talking to the disciples and he's talking about offense and he's talking about unforgiveness. Luke chapter 17, starting in verse one. Jesus said to his disciple, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. Other translations say it's impossible that no offenses will come. So if you've been offended, Welcome to the Offended Club, because we all have, because we live in a broken world and people are gonna let us down. Verse three, it says, so watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. In other words, don't pretend that it didn't happen, but go to the person calmly and discuss what was said or what was done so that there can be healing between the two. And it says, and if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent. Can you imagine? Hey, I know it's the seventh time, but forgive me again. Some people are like, you know, I stopped forgiving you at number four, bro. No, the Bible says, no, you keep forgiving. The apostle said, Lord, because it... It's not easy. The apostles knew that this wasn't easy, but their response to the Lord was this, increase our faith. 
When we pray, God, increase our faith, then what happens is our focus isn't on the offenses and what people have done us wrong by, but our focus is on our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we begin to look at him and the model that he had for each and every one of us. And we believe to, begin to believe what God says about our circumstances. So you may want to forgive someone and you don't have a clue on how to do it. Today, what we're going to be talking about and focusing in on is the faith to forgive. So who betrayed you? Who lied to you? Who mistreated you? Who took advantage of you? You see, sometimes it can be little offenses that we can't get over because they build up and build up. Or we can have little offenses that we're so easy to, to forgive, like maybe a family member comes over on Thanksgiving and they're supposed to bring a side dish and all they bring is a to-go box. You know, that, for me, that's a tough one. Or maybe your best friend forgot to send you a birthday card. Or, or maybe someone that was supposed to come to your wedding didn't RSVP and they're so close, but then they showed up and they showed up with a plus one and you didn't have enough food. Maybe somebody borrowed your shirt, like my son borrows all the time from me. You see, sometimes we can look at those small things in our life and we could say, you know what? I'm a Christ follower. It's no big deal. I'll forgive you. But it's not always easy to do that when you have something that has altered your life. Maybe someone that you trusted or someone that you admired, someone that you loved so dearly and they let you down. Maybe it's a roommate that stole from you. Maybe as a kid you were bullied. I remember being bullied in middle school. It affected me. Maybe it was a boyfriend that lied about you and lied to you. Maybe it was a parent that you wanted to please and you just wanted them to be happy and proud of you, but they made you feel small. It made you feel afraid. Maybe it's a spouse that you love so dearly and they cheated on you. A person that you trusted violated you at the worst possible ways and they made, made you feel like it was your fault. These are deep, heavy issues, but that's what we're gonna deal with from this pulpit because I want God to bring deliverance and healing to each and every one of you. Maybe it's an organization Maybe it's a church. There's so many people, they, they carry church hurt. It's the worst kind of hurt. And it robs them of their relationship with God because they see God through the lens of a church. I, I just want to tell you, this is a great church. But it's not a perfect church. And I want to encourage you, if you find a perfect church, don't go to it because you're going to ruin it. But... Who hurt you? Look inside of your heart and ask yourself, do I really need to forgive this person? They don't deserve it after what they did? The word of God says, yes, you do. But sometimes the only way we're gonna have the ability to forgive is for God to increase our faith. See, I don't know your story. I know some of your story, but I don't know most of your story. But in some levels, I understand because just like many of you, I've been hurt. I've been disappointed. I've been wounded. And so many times people, they try to handle it on their own. I couldn't handle that on my own. I needed God to help me. I needed friends around me that truly love me to help me. And so let me, here's an illustration. I want Elaine to just see this for just a second. <laughs> hey, don't get used to this, but you know, it's like vacuuming. Man, I am cleaning up some stuff. And you know, when you're vacuuming in the lines, you gotta have those lines, right? The lines are going, but you see, come up here, camera, camera woman. Her name's Dana, I know her name. I want you to focus in on this spot. You see, can you see that spot? 
I am vacuuming over that over and over, but I can't get that spot out. It's the same thing with unforgiveness. We, we try and we try and we try every angle and we wonder why am I not able to get that unforgiveness out of our heart because we're trying to do it by ourselves. And we need God to help us through the process of forgiving people that don't necessarily deserve to be forgiven. So what do you do when you have come at it at every angle and it doesn't seem to work? You see, unforgiveness and bitterness is right where the enemy wants you to live because it devastates and breaks your heart. And what God looks at in all of us he looks at our heart. He wants our hearts to be soft and pliable. He wants our hearts to be open, to be sensitive to the spirit of God. But oftentimes when we're bitter, our hearts are like hearts of stone that reflect and deflect everything from God. So it's hard at times, but I want you to know if God's for you, who can be against you? I want you to know that God's with you. He's got great plans for you. And if you're able to overcome this area of your life, what you will see in front of you is blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Matthew chapter five, verse 43, it says this. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, I tell you, it's an upside down kingdom. Jesus is saying it's upside down here. Love your enemies. Everyone say, love your enemies. Sounded good, but it's hard. It's hard. And pray for those who persecute you. Ephesians chapter four, verse 32, it says this. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Goes on to say, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Matthew 6, verse 14 and 15, it says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But here's the catch. Remember when Pastor Andrew was having the Sharpie a few weeks ago? A lot of people wanna take the Sharpie to this part. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive you of your sins. That's heavy. But you see, God clearly tells us to forgive, no matter what the circumstances, there's no but to it. So many people are like, I've forgiven everyone but this person. You don't understand. I don't understand. But I understand what the word of God says. And the word of God says to forgive. We forgive because we've been forgiven. Some of you have gone through awful, horrible, unfair things that it's not easy to even think about it. But God says to you today through his word, forgive. But what does it mean to forgive? What is forgiveness? I wanna give you a couple of points. What forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not forgetting. It isn't pretending. It's not pretending that this situation didn't happen. It's not sweeping it under the rug. It's not saying it wasn't wrong. You're not a doormat. It's, it's, not, it's not all those things. So many people, they think forgiveness is weak. No, forgiveness is strength, supernatural strength. When you feel betrayed, it doesn't mean you let them keep hurting you. So many people, they feel like, well, if I forgive them, we're gonna be best friends again. That's not always how it happens. You see, when we forgive, we create healthy, godly boundaries so that we can't be taken advantage of. We can't be wounded constantly over and over. We build trust. And sometimes God ultimately restores the relationship, but sometimes he, for, he heals your brokenness of your heart and you have a healthy boundary where that person is not allowed in to hurt you again. And that's good. Another thing forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not fair. It's not natural. It's not natural. The world says if, if someone hits me, I'm going to strike back. The word of God says opposite though. The word of God says, if you hit me, what am I supposed to do? Turn the other cheek. That's not fun. I was walking on the beach this week 
And I had a homeless guy came out of nowhere and he looks at me and he goes, I'm gonna break your nose. Now, I wanna tell you, I got, in the, I got in the flesh for a second and I went, don't you talk to me like that. And I'm like, hey, I'm a pastor. <laughs> and I said, God bless you. And I kept on walking. I'm not used to someone telling me they're gonna break my nose and that'd be okay. But the word of God says to turn the other cheek, to pray for your enemies, to pray for their transgressions. Um, follow Jesus goes against everything that culture says to do. It's not, it's not natural to expect a woman to forgive the terrible things that were done to her as a child. That's not, that's not natural. It doesn't make sense for someone to overlook the lies of a close friend that you trusted so much. You were like blood brothers, but yet they, they did you wrong. It's totally unfair to ask a husband to forgive his wife for what that wife did with his best friend. It's, it's not normal. It's not fair. I don't want to do that. But I want to tell you this. I'm grateful that God wasn't fair to me. What do I deserve? I deserve eternal separation from God because I'm a sinner. The wages of sin is death. But God instead didn't give me what I deserved. He didn't give me what was fair. He gave me grace. That's the God that we serve. <laughs> Psalm chapter 103, starting in verse 10, it says this. He, God, does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removed our transgressions from us. Thank Jesus for his grace. Where would any of us be without the grace of God in our life. So forgiveness isn't forgetting. Forgiveness isn't fair. So what is forgiveness? In your notes, it says forgiveness is giving others what God gave you. I don't know about you, God gave me a second chance. I don't know about you, God gave me a hundredth chance. I, I, I don't know about you. I mean, we've got some spiritual people in here. But God gave me a thousandth chance because if it was for what I deserve, I'm a sinner. I've lied, I've cheated, I've lusted, I've betrayed, I've hurt people. But thank God his forgiveness and grace is what he showed me. His forgiveness and grace is what he shows you as Christ followers. When you go to him for repentance, he's right there to forgive you every single time. Why is forgiveness so important? In your notes, forgiveness is at the center of the heart of God. Jesus came, that's why he came, to redeem mankind from their sins. That's why he came to this earth, died on the cross, for the remission of our sins. First John chapter one, verse nine, it says, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just that he will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Because of what Christ did for me and you, we are righteous people. So many people are walking around in shame and disappointment of their past. You listen to me. When you made your life right with Christ, you repented of your sin, he made you righteous, right with God. You stand up straight and tall. I am a righteous man because of what Jesus Christ did. You are a righteous man and woman because of what Jesus did for you on, on the cross. But the heart of God is receiving forgiveness, but it's also giving forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't just flow to us. Forgiveness flows through us. Undeserved favor, mercy, love that flows from God to us but then flows out of us to those around us. So I want you to imagine your, your soul and your heart as a spring water. There's no log blocking it. There's no dam. The spring is just going, it's coming, it's flowing freely, and it's clean, and it's pure, and it's beautiful. But when those beavers block and put a dam in that spring, 
and there's things that are blocking the, the flow of that spring, what can happen is it can get dirty. That spring gets polluted. The thing starts to smell. How's your flow? How's your flow today? Is, is it polluted? Is it blocked? Is there a dam blocking the flow of forgiveness from God to you, to others? Because I believe today that we can un block that dam today in Jesus' name because God wants to flow in us and through us. That's what it means. When we're a Christ follower, we're representing Jesus. We're an ambassador of Christ. Forgiveness is flowing to us. It's flowing through us. It's flowing to us. It's flowing through us. I wanna read the Lord's Prayer to you. And this is the prayer that Jesus gave as an example of what we need to focus our prayers on. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? Those are easy ones to pray. God, you're so awesome. How, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, give me some food to eat today. But then it goes on. It says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It was so important that he put it in the example of the prayer that we need to be praying. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil in Jesus' name, amen. Do we really pray that? When we pray it, are we just saying the Lord's Prayer and it's, it's not meaningful to us? Are, are you saying that when you're thinking about the boss that you can't stand? Do you think about that Lord's Prayer when you're having a hard time forgiving your ex? Are, are you thinking about the Lord's Prayer when that next door neighbor that drives you absolutely crazy or the homeowners association director that has nothing else to do but put a note on your door? Are, are you thinking about the Lord's prayer? How's your flow? Because it's easy when it's easy, but it's hard when we're dealing with difficult circumstances. So why does God want to forgive? God, he asks you to forgive because he loves you. He has the best for you. From the inside out, every area of your life, everything in scripture, it's for you. It's a love letter to you on how to live, how to love, how to care, how to love God, how to love people. God doesn't ask you to forgive so that you can heal the other person. So I'm not telling you to go home, give somebody a call and say, hey, by the way, I heard a great message today. I forgive you. Don't do that. God asks you to forgive because he knows it'll heal you. It, it'll heal your soul. It'll set you free. You see, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting it to kill the other person. We keep drinking it and we're the only ones getting hurt and we're just hoping that that other person's gonna get sick. Forgiving may not set the person that you forgive free, but forgiveness will absolutely set you free. Unforgiveness will hold us captive. It'll hold us in a prison cell where we're locked and unable to move into the fullness of God. Our prayer is today, Lord, increase our faith. Lord, help me to get my eyes off of the hurt and the pain. God, help me get my eyes on you. Help me to have more faith. Increase my faith. We're saying, Jesus, I trust you. I have faith that your will is perfect inside of me as I walk by faith and not by sight. Faith enables me to see the opportunity for freedom where others only see the offenses. Faith comes before feelings. Faith comes before healing. Every day we, we choose to walk in faith and not walk in our flesh and not walk in anger. In faith, I'm choosing to give what God has given me so freely to those around me that may not deserve it, but neither did I. 
Forgiveness can be a process, but it also can be a moment. It takes faith to forgive. It takes faith to believe that on the other side of the offense is something that's so much greater and so much better for you. So what's holding you back from your freedom? Why are you holding on to that? Married people in this room, I wanna encourage you, the best marriages are people who are the professional forgivers. How much freedom do you deserve? How much freedom do you desire? You see, by faith, I choose to forgive. It's not about what I feel. It's not about the damage that's been done. By faith, I choose to forgive. So what are you, what are you letting go of today? Is it neglect? Is it, is it lies that have been spoken over your life? Is it betrayal and hurt? Because today you can make a choice that you're not going to hurt anymore. You're no longer gonna be a victim to this person, but you're gonna set free and give it to God and you're gonna let it go. Because God's gonna give you the faith to forgive, the faith to be free, to get your joy back. There's some people they feel like I haven't had joy in a long time. Bitterness and unforgiveness will absolutely rob you of your joy. It'll rob you of your peace. It's time to get your joy and your peace back on. See, we say all the time, we love God and we love people. Loving God's the easy part. <laughs> loving people, truly loving people unconditionally can be so difficult. But what is love? Love is patient. Love's kind. Love's not easily angered. Love keeps no record of wrongs. Love never fails. You see, there's nothing we can do to change our past, but God's given you the ability today to forgive, and when you forgive, you will change your future for the glory of God. It'll change everything. But it starts with giving others what God gave you. So let's get back to my story I had at the beginning being gossiped about, comrades, colleagues, talking behind our backs, saying all these things, man, I cut that thing off. I'm like, you talk about my wife, I'm, not, I'm never talking to you again. A Couple years goes by. And I'm thinking about it every day. And one night I went to bed and I had a nightmare. And in this nightmare, this man got killed in a car accident. And I woke up so disturbed, so upset that I allowed my unforgiveness to not be resolved. And in this dream, I felt like I was gonna carry this unresolved anger and unforgiveness for the rest of my life. So I woke up that morning, I said, I'm getting this thing right today. I looked all over the city, I'm going to Clearwater, I'm going to Oldsboro, I'm going to Safety Harbor, and I ended up going to my son's baseball game. And I look over, and there he was at his son's baseball game. And I went over to him and I said, just, can I have just a second? And I said to him, will you forgive me? Will you, will you forgive me for how I've wronged you? Will you forgive me for things that I've said, for things that I've done? He starts crying. We hug, we embrace, I'm crying. We're doing that little shake thing that guys do so it doesn't get weird. But you see, in that moment, I gave grace. In that moment, the brokenness of my heart was healed. In, in that moment, the bitterness was uprooted and it was gone. Now, we weren't best friends after that, but we're colleagues and we talk. We've had meals together. We brainstormed together. And you see, I could have carried that all of these years and now all these years later have been severely da damaged because that's what bitterness and unforgiveness does. Long-term, it damages you from the inside out. So as I close today, maybe you're here and you've been holding on to a grudge. Maybe you're here and you've had unforgiveness in your heart towards someone. 
My challenge to you today is to allow God to increase your faith and allow God to give you the supernatural strength to forgive, not based on what you feel, but based on who God is and what God's done in each one of our lives and our hearts. Can we bow our heads and close our eyes today? First thing I wanna do, am I the only one that's gone through this kind of thing? <laughs> but if you feel like this message was directly to you, I'm not gonna have you raise your hand or anything like that, but what I want you to do, I just want you to look up at me so I know that I was hearing from God. Something you really struggled with, maybe something you've gone through, okay. Okay. Well, thank God, there's other people besides me that have walked through this, this, this process. I wanna encourage each and every one of you that looked up at me, today's a new day. Today's a new day. Today you're making a choice for God to increase your faith. Today you're making a choice to not hold on to the forgiveness that's ruining you from the inside out, but you're extending the grace that God gave you to pour out to those that have wronged you. Let me just pray over you today. Father, I pray for each and every person that's gone through these things. Maybe it's a church hurt, maybe it's a family hurt, maybe it's a childhood hurt, maybe it's a betrayal from a friend. I pray today that you would heal every broken area of their heart. Satan, you are a liar and we are not going to take the bait of offense anymore. We choose grace, we choose faith, we choose favor, we choose, God, who you are and what you've done and given to us so freely. I pray you bless every single person in this room today. Let them walk out of this room lighter, freer, and knowing that they're walking by faith in this area of their life. With every head bowed, every eye closed, before we dismiss, the most important act of faith that you'll ever do is by receiving the grace of God and putting your faith in Jesus Christ. Understanding that Jesus Christ went to the cross for the remission of our sins. On the third day, he was raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's extending his love and grace to you today. Salvation's free, salvation's for you, and salvation is for now. If you're here today and you wanna be included in this closing prayer, you wanna accept Christ or rededicate your life to Jesus Christ today, when I count to three, I just wanna encourage you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. God sees your hand, but most importantly, he sees your heart. Can we all pray together for the sake of all those that raise their hands today? Just pray after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you for who you are. You're a God of grace. You're a God of love. Today, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord, my Savior, my God, and truly my best friend. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. God bless amen. you, church. I love you so much.